Hi, this is Rhonda from Montana Bola Cherries and this is the vegetable garden in July. So, I'm going to start at the back side of the garden because that's where the sun is coming from. In the corn, I plant the vining things. So these are gourds and there's pumpkins in with the corn down there. And this row on the outside here is winter squash. And, and here are the cucumbers in this end are the pickling cucumbers and that other end are the Armenian cucumbers. And they're planted on the trellis so that they can vine up. And then, and then there was two and a half rows of green beans, green beans and, and yellow beans, and they're all bush beans, and they're all snap beans. And so then there was a little bit of space in between, so there is some more dill. There's dill everywhere. There's dill up by the herb gardens. There's dill over uh, next to the tomatoes, there's dill in the pep, in the potatoes. Wherever dill comes up, we let it we let it grow. It is a really important part of the pickles that we love so much. So we let dill just grow. All right. So then the green beans, the tomatoes, and this is actually the back side. They are planted on the other side of this trellis, but they grow through things. There's blossoms on all of the beans and all of the cucumbers. There will soon be cucumbers and beans to pick. And the tomatoes. There are some tomatoes coming underneath and the tomatoes you can see the kitchen string are tied up to the trellis to keep the tomatoes themselves off the ground as much as possible it doesn't always work as you can see but it does make it better there's all kinds of tomatoes in here this is half of a row of beets. We have harvested some of the beets. Um, and there will be more, more beets to go. So in a couple of weeks, I will just take them all and the little tiny ones will be pickled and the larger ones will turn into borscht beet soup um, and freeze or just freeze. Just for now, we're just eating to just enjoy them. And the carrots are starting to become carrots. If I were to pull a carrot, they would not be very good size. They wouldn't even look like a carrot underneath. This is where the radishes were. And here's my other dill. Lettuce is still doing really well. It's usually not by this time of year. So I'll cut it all today and share it with friends and take what we want and then it probably won't come back. There's some of it down here that's kind of going to seed. So, And then right here, this is Swiss chard. And the Swiss chard will last all summer long. That's the lettuce that's going to seed next to the Swiss chard here. So the Swiss chard, just cut it and so the ones that, the ones that got really big, um, we gave up to the grasshoppers, and I'll just feed the remnants of those to the chickens, and we'll start over again. So here, let's see if I can get out of the way here. The onions, and 
So they look like they're done, but they're not. They'll keep growing. They just, they get top heavy. They fall over, the wind blows. The, the tops are not as strong, um, but they're still green. You can tell when they are close to being ready to be picked when they start turning brown on the top. That will be later this fall. This is where the peas were. And the peas, as you can see, are done. When it gets hot, um, the peas will stop producing and they'll, they'll die back. And then the weeds will take over. So um, I will... As soon as I'm done watering here, I will unplug right here and put in put a plug in there so that this line doesn't water doesn't run water through it anymore. These two lines for the peas. And this part won't be weed watered and then I won't have so many problems with weeds. I'll just cover it with grass as it becomes available. But the cut grass is a valuable commodity at the moment because it goes in between all the rows. These are the potatoes. Some volunteer sunflowers that were just pretty, so I left them. And the potatoes. There's three rows and four different kinds of potatoes. They are in the blossom stage. So that is what we were waiting for. We healed until they came to the blossom stage, and then we stop. We don't heal them anymore. We don't. Um, we just wait. When they're done with the blossom stage, there will be new potatoes. So after it's blossomed for a while, it will it will start. The, the reds are over here. And that's where we'll start with for our new potatoes. So the rest of the vegetables are over there on the other side of the chicken run. Before we head over there, this is from the other end, from the top end of the garden. And here's the zucchini here. I have a garden map that I made. And if you would like a garden map, you can get those from um, the website by signing up for the newsletter. You can get one of those free. And when I plant, I make a garden map and tell myself where I'm planting. Hello, Libby. So I know that I planted two zucchini, or four zucchini, but only two of them came up. And I know that they are right here. Makes them easy to find, and we're starting to have zucchini. In a couple of days, we will be eating zucchini. I love zucchini. All right, here is the pepper orchard. All of these. Peppers are doing really well. Several varieties of peppers here. Here's the paprika. They're starting to come. And I put tags in here so I can tell what they are. The jalapenos. I plant a whole bunch of varieties, a whole bunch of things, so I label everything so I can keep track of how well it did. Okay, Anaheim's. Here's the bells. Start to get some bell peppers. Right, and then from there, go to these cabbage. These cabbage are huge. The green cabbage. And purple cabbage.
kohlrabi. The kohlrabi is ready. Get to be about that big. Harvest it. There will be a video on harvesting kohlrabi and kale. The kale we harvest throughout the summer and I have a video about that as well. And then we found that we didn't have banana peppers, so banana peppers were next. We went and got some banana peppers and tucked them right in here at the end. So then they're, they're not, they haven't started very much, but they will have time to do that. So on the perennials, the weeds took over again, but that's all right. It's better than it was. The raspberries are coming, so here's some raspberry plants. And they are small. They will not produce raspberries this year. However, over here, next to the currants, there are some raspberries that are getting ready to give us some raspberries. Blossom and then they start producing raspberries. This is a currant bush next to the raspberries, and it has already given us all the currants it's going to. Two currant bushes. A cherry tree. Tiny cherries, but at the end. Cherries are tiny. So we either juice them or if I'm feeling really ambitious, I will pit them, but it's a difficult job to pit them. It's kind of tedious, so um, out of the juice I can make whatever I want to. Jelly, syrup, just have cherry juice for flavorings. The nutrients are all still there, so here's my my rhubarb experiment in several different places. They're getting taken over, but that's all right. We'll get it taken care of. So that's the rhubarb that I started from seed. It's doing really well. I won't harvest it this year, but next year it, it will be all ready to go. The asparagus experiment. Here's the asparagus that we planted from seed. It got quite tall in the house, and then... When I put it back out here, it died back a little bit, but it is coming back from the root, which is what we want. It will be three years. Not next year, but the year after that. We can carefully harvest once and then let it go to seed. Here's some established asparagus. At the end of the season, you let it go to seed because that is what develops the roots, and then you make sure that you have asparagus every year. So here's the asparagus going to seed. Here at the end of the perennial garden, this is comfrey. It's a very useful herb. It also is really great for the chickens, for people and for chickens. You don't. And then it's got the blossoms that come, and the bees love the blossoms. So I come out here with my nippers and I cut off a hand, an uh, armful throw it into the chickens every once in a while, otherwise it will take over this whole garden. Here's the horseradish. Use horseradish at the root. Use the roots of horseradish. So that we let it do whatever it wants to. And then during cooler months, uh, the wives' tail is um, in a month that ends in R, but that does make it the cooler months, you can harvest the root and you grind it up to make horseradish sauce. That is the vegetable garden in July. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found some things that will help make your vegetable garden grow and, and produce more the way you would like it to.